In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a use case implemented using the transaction script pattern and refactor it to use the domain model pattern. The end goal is to make the solution more maintainable and encapsulate more of the business logic inside of the domain layer. What I'm going to do is implement the add exercises command handler using the transaction script pattern and then I'm going to show you how to refactor it to use the domain model pattern. This command contains the workout ID where we are going to be adding the exercises and the list of exercise request objects and this object contains the exercise type, the target type and the distance and duration of the exercise. The command handler itself is already injecting the required dependencies. These are the workout repository, the exercise repository, and the unit of work. I'm also using the primary constructors feature that's available for classes in .NET 8, and I think it really simplifies your constructor because you no longer have to define the private read-only fields for your dependency injection. So let's start the implementation using the transaction script Better. The first thing I need is to obtain a workout instance. So let's grab a workout by using the workout repository. So I'm going to say workout repository get by ID async and we can pass it the user ID and the cancellation token in order to get back the workout instance. If this workout is null by any chance, we're going to return a respective error. So I'm going to say result failure and we can return the workout errors instance and the one that I'm looking for is not found. And I'm also going to pass it the workout ID to create a more descriptive error message. The next thing I need to do is to create my individual exercises so that I can add them to my workout. The transaction script pattern is a procedural way of writing your code and you can think of this use case as a series of unique steps that gets us to the result that we want to achieve. So the first procedural step is get the workout. The next procedural step will be to create the exercises. So I'm going to create a comment to describe this. After that, we're going to insert the exercises into the repository. So let me add a comment for that. And lastly, we're going to be saving the changes to the database. So these are our procedural steps for the transaction script and we just have to fill in the steps. So let's create the exercises. So I'm going to say request exercises and then for each. And we're going to loop through each exercise request instance and try to create a new exercise entity. I'm also going to be performing some validations here. So let me create a list of error objects because I'm going to use it to collect any validation errors so that I can return them from my use case when I'm done with creating the exercises. The first validation that I want to check is if the exercise request target type is equal to distance and the specified distance is null. I'm going to check if the distance in meters is null. In that case, I have an error and I want to add that to my errors collection. I'm going to say exercise errors and I'm going to add a missing distance error to my collection. Then the next validation that I'm going to do is if the target type is equal to time and the time component of my request is unspecified. So I'll say the duration is now, in that case, I'm going to add a different error. So I'm going to say errors, add exercise errors, and then I'm going to say missing duration. I also need to make sure that I don't continue the execution when I run into my validation errors. So I'm going to say continue in both cases. And if I manage to pass both of these checks, then I can create a new exercise instance. So let me create a new exercise. We need an identifier. So I'm going to say GUID and create a random GUID value. Then I'm going to use the workout to pass in the workout ID. And then we can use the exercise request to specify all the remaining values. This argument will be the distance object. And I'm going to use the distance in meters to pass in the value. I'm also sure that this is not null. And the only thing that's remaining is to create a new time span. So I'm going to say time span from seconds and I'm going to use the exercise request because it contains the duration in seconds field. I'm also sure that this is not null because I already checked it earlier. And finally, now that I have the exercise, I can say workout exercises and add the exercise instance. So this takes care of the create exercises step, but I also need to make sure that I don't have any validation errors. So I'm going to say if there are any 
errors, then I need to return a failure result. Instead of using link, you can also check that the count of this list is equal to zero. And what I'm going to do here is say return result failure, and I'm going to create a new validation error instance and pass it the individual errors. But I'll have to convert them into an array to satisfy the constructor arguments. When I get to this step, I can loop through the workout exercises one by one and add them to my repository. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use the exercise repository to call the insert method and add the individual exercises. And then I can just say await unit to work, save changes, async, and persist everything in the database. So this is what the use case looks like when we use the transaction script pattern, and all of the logic is inside of the use case itself. This approach is very common in procedural programming and when you aren't using the domain model pattern. Basically what that means is to push logic into your domain layer by creating methods on your domain entities that contain the behavior. So how would we refactor this to move the logic into our domain layer? Let's start with the create exercises step, which is also the most complex. This entire piece of code is responsible for creating a new exercise instance. What if I were to take all of this validation logic and move it into the exercise entity? One pattern that I like to use to implement this is the static factory pattern and it comes down to creating a static method. I'm also going to return a result instance here to handle my validation errors and we just call this method create. I'm going to specify all of the arguments that we will need to create a new exercise instance. This will be the workout ID, the exercise type, the target type for this exercise. Then I'm going to use my distance value object directly and also the time span instance for the duration value. Now I'm going to add the code that was previously inside of my use case and let's try to fix it to make it work with our static factory method. The first thing I need to do is to fix the validation logic. So if the target type is distance and the distance itself is null, then we're going to return a missing distance error. Instead of adding this to a list, we're going to say return result failure. And this has to be a failure of an exercise type. And I can say return me the missing distance error. I'm going to do the same here if the target type is time and the duration that was specified is null then we're going to return a result failure and return a missing duration error. Otherwise I can create my exercise so I already have the exercise ID the exercise and target type and I'm also passing in my distance and duration instances. And I can go ahead and return the exercise itself. Now, if I go back to my use case, I can get rid of this validation and this call to my exercise constructor. And actually, if you want to use the static factory method, it's a good practice to make the constructor private so that you can't call it directly from your use case. So now I'm forced to call my factory method and let's specify the fields that we're going to need. So I'm already passing in the workout ID, the exercise and target type. Now for the distance in this case, I actually want to validate that this isn't null. So I'm going to say if this is not null. An alternative would be to call the has value method. In that case, we're going to create a distance object and pass it. Otherwise, we're going to pass in null. And let's do the same for the time span. I'm going to say if the exercise request duration in seconds has a value, then we're going to create a time span instance. Otherwise, we're going to return null. And this will actually return a result of the exercise type, which means we can find the exercise instance on the value property. However, if this is a failure result, then I need to add my error to the errors list. So I'm going to say errors add result error. And I also have to say continue so that I don't end up adding an exercise that is invalid. So this is starting to look better. We moved some of the logic into the exercise type and encapsulated it inside of the factory method. However, we are still exposing the exercises collection on the workout, which means anyone is able to take this collection and freely add or remove the exercises. So the next step that I'm going to take is to encapsulate the adding of the exercise to the exercises collection. So I'm going to head over to the workout entity and let's start by creating a backing field for our exercises. I'm going to create a private read-only field 
that's going to be a list of the exercises so it's going to have the same purpose except I'm going to return it here instead of allowing someone to work with the property directly. So I'm going to say exercises to list. Now I'm going to assign this a default empty list so that I don't get any null reference exceptions. And let's expose a method on the workout entity that's going to take care of adding an exercise. Let's also make it return a result object and let's call it the add exercise method. I'm going to copy the arguments from here to just make this slightly faster and the distance will be the raw decimal value and the duration will be an integer and then I'm going to take the code that is present here and move all of that into my workout class so let's see what that will look like we're going to call the exercise create method and we need to pass it the workout ID the exercise type and the target type then I need to check if the distance has a value and in that case we need to use this value to create a new distance object and the same for the duration so if it has a value create a new time span object and now I can write this as a one-liner to make it more readable if the result I get back is a failure result let's return it from this method otherwise I can take my exercise and add it to my exercises collection and in that case, I'm going to return a success result. So now I need to call this from my use case. And that's going to be workout and exercise. And I just need to specify my individual arguments. So let's pass in the distance in meters and the duration in seconds as the arguments. This will return a result object back. And if this is a failure result, then I'm going to add the error to the errors collection. So we are refactoring this one step at a time. And I'm taking it slowly so that I don't make any mistakes. And one improvement point you can do here is to utilize some link methods. I have a factory method on my validation error class that takes in a collection of result objects and takes in any failures and extracts the error instances from these failures. So if I wanted to use this, I have to update this to be results instead of errors then I'm going to be adding my individual result to the results collection regardless of if it succeeds or fails and I'm going to update the condition here to say if there is any result where we have a failure and then I'm going to say validation error and call the from results method and I can just pass in the results collection at this point I can just inline the results so let's convert this into a link expression and let me make this more readable so that you can see what is actually going on. So I'm calling the select method and inside of the body of this method, I'm calling my add exercise method on the workout. I'm passing in the individual arguments and this will return back a result. And then I just call to list and I get back my results collection. So this is the same as the example with the for each loop only it's a bit more concise. The next thing I would do is instead of adding the exercises one by one, why not create an insert range method? So let's take the existing method that we have and rename it to be insert range. I'm going to update the name and then we're going to take in a collection of exercise objects. I also need to update my implementation. So here we have an I enumerable of exercises. And here I'm going to say add range and we can pass in the exercises to the add range method. And EF core already supports all of this. If I go back to my use case here, I can just say insert the workout exercises instead of adding them one by one. And we can simplify this to just one method call. And now I'm going to start getting rid of these comments. So what we are left with is a mix between a transaction script and the domain model where the important aspects of the business logic are executed inside of our domain. The one domain method that we are calling is the add exercise method, which returns back an appropriate result. And then we can determine if we want to return a validation error or we have succeeded and we can insert the exercises to the repository and save them to the database. And the huge benefit of using the domain model pattern is that you can test your domain model logic individually. So I can take the exercise class and I can test the behavior of the create method without having to go through my use case. I can do the same in the workout entity and test the add exercise method and verify that this behavior is what I'm expecting. For example, I can check the side effects and see if the exercise is added to the underlying collection. If I wanted to do this with a transaction script, 
I would have to use the use case itself, do a lot of manual setup if I wanted to mock my dependencies in order to generate the correct state to run my test and verify the actual behavior that I want to check. If you want to learn more about designing a rich domain model and pushing the behavior down, then take a look at this video next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.